What if I told you that a $15 million machine could make a $400 million machine obsolete? Japan is demonstrating a path that could destroy the world's most powerful tech monopoly. And if it scales, the economics of advanced chip making could change by orders of magnitude. This isn't clickbait. This is happening right now in Japanese labs. And when you understand what's really going on here, you'll realize this isn't just about cheaper chips. This is about control. This is about power. And this is about who gets to decide what technology exists in your hands. By the end of this video, you'll understand why TSMC is probably having emergency board meetings, why the US government is watching Japan very carefully, and why the next five years could completely rewrite the rules of the tech industry. To understand why what Japan just did is so insane, we need to talk about the most powerful company you've probably never heard of, ASML. ASML is the only company on Earth shipping leading-edge extreme ultraviolet lithography scanners, the critical choke point for the most advanced chip nodes. And without those machines, the cutting-edge processors in your phone, your laptop, your AI systems, none of them exist. Let me say that again. There is one company in one country that controls the supply of leading-edge EUV scanners, not Google, not Apple, not even TSMC, Samsung, or Intel can make their most advanced chips without ASML's tools. And how much does one of these machines cost? Between 3 odd 80s and $400 million each. That's more than most Boeing aircraft. They weigh dozens of tons. They take up entire rooms. They require absurdly precise optical systems, extreme vacuums, enormous electrical consumption, and months of installation by dozens of specialized engineers. Only three companies on Earth can even afford this infrastructure. TSMC, Intel, and Samsung. That's it. Three companies. That's your global competition for advanced chips. But here's where the story gets darker, and this is what they don't tell you in tech headlines. ASML's monopoly isn't just about technology, it's about control. In 2019, the US government forced ASML to stop selling to China, not because of quality concerns, not because of safety, because whoever controls these machines controls the future. That's not capitalism, that's weaponized technology. And Japan just created a backdoor. Recently, Japanese researchers demonstrated a path towards sub-2 nanometer patterning without using extreme ultraviolet lithography. Read that again. They're showing it's possible to pattern features at scales approaching what TSMC is currently mass-producing without the $400 million machine. And if this technology scales, if yield, throughput, and multi-layer alignment can be solved at production scale, the tool costs alone could drop by tens of times, potentially transforming the economics of advanced chip making. We're not talking about a 20% cost reduction. We're not talking about incremental improvements. We're talking about a technology that could fundamentally change who can afford to manufacture advanced semiconductors. But how is this even possible? The Japanese approach is called nano-imprint lithography and it's so elegantly simple that you'll wonder why nobody thought of it before. Instead of using extreme ultraviolet light bouncing off ultra-precise mirrors in a vacuum chamber, which is what ASML's machines do, the Japanese method uses something much more direct, a physical stamp. Think about it like this. ASML's method is like using a projector to draw a picture on a wall from across the room. You need perfect optics, perfect alignment, perfect conditions. Japan's method is like pressing a stamp directly onto paper. You make a nanoscale mold with the chip pattern already engraved at atomic precision, coat the silicon wafer with a polymer, and literally press the pattern onto it. Then you harden the polymer with conventional UV light, remove the mold, and the pattern is etched with extreme precision. No gigantic lenses, no atomic level mirrors, no extreme vacuum, no EUV plasma sources the physics becomes radically simpler, which is why the cost collapses. Canon, yes, the camera company, along with Dye Nippon Printing, has developed nano-imprint lithography tools with industry estimates suggesting pricing around $15 million per system. That's still an order of magnitude cheaper than ASML's 380-400 million high NA systems. And the energy consumption? Estimated to drop by 80-90% compared to EUV. 
Now, before you think this is just laboratory science that'll never reach your iPhone, let me show you why this is already further along than most people realize and why TSMC, Samsung and Intel are probably watching Japan very, very closely right now. But first, if this is blowing your mind as much as it's blowing mine, hit that subscribe button. This channel breaks down the technology revolutions reshaping our world. And trust me, what's coming in the next five years will make the last decade look slow. Here's the question everyone asks. How can you achieve 1.4 nanometer precision with a physical stamp? Isn't that impossible? Here's the beautiful part. Nanoimprint lithography doesn't depend on the wavelength of light, which is what limits traditional lithography. It depends on the geometric precision of the mold itself. That means the limit is no longer optical physics, it's material science. And Japan has been the world leader in material science for decades. Using advanced ion etching, molecular self-assembly, and materials physics that sound like science fiction, Japanese labs have demonstrated the ability to create sub-2 nanometer features in controlled environments. The problem isn't making one perfect sub-2 nanometer pattern. The problem is repeating this process billions of times on a 300 mm wafer, layer after layer, with the yield, overlay accuracy, and defect density that mass production demands. A modern chip has dozens of layers, transistors, contacts, metal interconnects, insulators, and they all must align with brutal precision. That's the challenge. And that's what's still being refined. So when people say Japan is demonstrating sub-2 AMM patterning without EUV, they're not talking about mass production for your next iPhone. Not yet. But they're also not talking about a fantasy. They're talking about a technology that's moved from impossible to improbable to Canon shipped its first production tool to Texas in 2024 and we're working on scaling it up right now. And here's where the story takes a turn that makes this whole thing even more fascinating. Because while Japan is developing this cheap alternative to ASML's machines, they're simultaneously playing the exact same game as everyone else. It's like they're hedging their bets, making sure they win no matter which technology dominates the future. This is geopolitical chess at the highest level. And the next move is called Rapidus. Japan isn't only betting on the cheaper path. They're also attacking the peak of current technology with a project that could completely redefine their role in semiconductors. It's called Rapidus. Rapidus is a consortium created by Japanese industrial giants, Toyota, Sony, SoftBank, NEC, Denso and others with one very clear and very ambitious goal. Manufacture two nanometer chips in Japan before 2027 and return the country to the most exclusive technological club on the planet. The Japanese government has injected billions of dollars in direct subsidies because this isn't just economics. This is national security. This is technological sovereignty. And Rapidus isn't working alone. They're collaborating closely with IBM, which has been researching advanced transistor architectures like gate all-around structures, the future of computing as silicon reaches its physical limits. At the end of 2024, Specifically December 18th, Rapidus officially received its first ASML EUV scanner, the NXE 3800E model, at its Hokkaido facility. This is historic, because until now, Japan has been incredibly strong in materials, chemistry, precision equipment and components, but not in manufacturing cutting-edge logic chips with EUV technology. That's about to change. During 2026, Rapidus will begin pilot production of two nanometer chips. Not for mass market phones initially, but for high value applications. AI processes, supercomputing, defense systems, next generation automotive technology. So let's be clear about what Japan is doing here. Path A, develop nano imprint lithography that could make advanced chip manufacturing tools tens of times cheaper, potentially disrupting ASML's business model if yield and throughput scale. Path B, build their own EUV-based manufacturing capability so they don't depend on Taiwan or South Korea for cutting-edge logic chips. They're covering both sides of the bet. No matter which technology wins, Japan wins. That's not just smart strategy. That's brilliant strategy. 
So what happens when the capital cost barrier for advanced chip making potentially drops by an order of magnitude? Or when Japan successfully breaks into the elite club of two nanometer manufacturers? The scenarios range from revolutionary to absolutely catastrophic for current market leaders. And at least one of these scenarios will reshape the entire tech industry within the next decade. Scenario 1. Decentralization. ASML maintains dominance in the most advanced segment, but Japan, and later other countries, begin producing advanced node chips more locally and affordably as nano-imprint lithography matures for specific applications. This opens the door to real industrial decentralization. Europe, India, Latin America. Even parts of Africa could potentially aspire to manufacture advanced semiconductors without spending hundreds of millions per tool. If the technology scales and if they can solve the yield and integration challenges. Right now, only a handful of locations on Earth can make advanced chips. In this scenario, dozens of countries gain that capability. The geopolitical implications are staggering. Tech power stops being concentrated in Taiwan, South Korea and the US. Scenario 2. Japan returns to the elite. Rapidus succeeds with 2NM manufacturing and Japan officially joins the world's most exclusive technology club. TSMC's near-absolute dominance breaks. Customers get alternatives. Pricing pressure intensifies. Innovation accelerates because monopolies breed complacency. This isn't just about cheaper chips. It's about what happens when you break a chokehold. Scenario 3. The wild card. Within 10-15 years, nano-imprint lithography successfully scales to become competitive with EUV for certain advanced nodes. The barrier to entry drops from $400 million tools to $15 million tools. Still expensive, but accessible to far more players. New entrants flood specific segments of the market. The concentration of chip-making power begins to fragment. And suddenly, the cost structure of advanced semiconductor manufacturing fundamentally shifts. Think about what you paid for your last phone, your last laptop, your smart home devices. Now imagine if the capital costs of manufacturing the chips inside dropped by an order of magnitude, and if that savings eventually made its way to you. Where does that money go? Option A, your pocket. Devices could become more affordable as manufacturing economics improve. Option B, into technology so advanced we can't even imagine it yet, because suddenly more companies can afford to compete at the cutting edge. Your next phone could have the computing power of today's data centers. Not in 20 years. In 3-5 years. AI that currently runs in the cloud could run entirely on your device. Privacy becomes real again because your data never leaves your hardware. Edge computing becomes the standard. Autonomous vehicles become economically viable at mass scale. But here's the darker possibility. If Japan succeeds and other countries follow, but Western countries don't adapt fast enough, we could see the first real technological gap in decades. China is watching this very carefully. Because if nano-imprint lithography works, the US sanctions on ASML sales become meaningless. This is why this matters. This is why every government with a technology strategy is paying attention. It's still too early to say Japan has defeated ASML or TSMC. But one thing is already clear. The technological monopoly has begun to crack. ASML's 400 million machines built the modern world. Japan's 15 million nano-imprint approach might be what disrupts it if it scales. The question isn't whether this changes everything. The question is whether you'll see it coming before everyone else does. If this video opened your eyes to what's really happening in chip manufacturing, you need to share it right now. Hit that share button. Send it to someone who needs to understand where this technology is headed. Because in five years, when the semiconductor landscape looks completely different, everyone will pretend they saw this coming. Make sure you're actually one of the people who did. Subscribe if you haven't already, because the revolutions coming next make this look like just the opening act. I'll see you in the next one.